Well, it took took a while to get here, right? I mean, yeah. uh, seems like it's been a bit since you since you earned the spot. So, uh, how do you feel that now that you're here? Yeah, it was a it was a long time coming. It feels good, to be honest. I, as I said, as you said, it was a, a lo long time before, after I won the contender series and got the contract. So, supposed to fight at March, then July, September, everything postponed and cancelled due to Corona, and here we are now. Was it all? I'm just curious because I know uh, obviously coronavirus at first in March, especially. Were all the changes along the way? Was it all COVID related, or did yeah. you have any like injuries or anything? Is it just? March was COVID, as you know, and then at July when I was supposed to fight at Fight Island, the first the first series of events, I was tested positive on COVID, and I know I was a bit shocked and surprised to be honest because I had no symptoms, no no illness, nothing. I was perfectly healthy, felt good. I was really shocked. We even trained uh, me, my coach, and my sparring partners actually partner it was one guy we trained alone outside the group you know and my coach tes tested negative I tested positive so then after a couple of days my girlfriend tested my dad tested they both negative so <laughs> I think that was something something well, so you think maybe it was like a false test really or a false positive I should say I, I think those tests aren't re reliable as, yeah. as much you know so it was a bit um, Stressful when we tested for for <laughs> for this event. I was like jumpy, and it was it was stressful to be honest. <laughs> well, so this time, I mean, how frustrated, how difficult? Because right, I mean, you work to get into the UFC, yeah. you make it, and then this pandemic things happen that you could never predict. I mean, how difficult was that to kind of keep your focus? I mean, we we trained all the way, you know. After uh, after con contender series, we knew the event was where I was going to participate was coming fast and I was, you know, training all the time. So I would say longer than a year I'm in a, in like fight, <laughs> fight camp. So it was, it's a bit hard, you know, but we managed to uh, keep our cool and we're here opening the main card. So yeah, that also feels very nice. I know you would have preferred to fight in between then and now, but I mean, have you? Do you feel like you've added things to your game? Do you feel like you've been able to kind of use this time in a positive manner? Well, as I said, I kept training. I didn't took no days off, and I think it it was positive on my you know whole whole game. And I think it was at the end. It's good for me. You know, this is a great opportunity. And again, on Fight Island, it's 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 good. You know, very cool. Talk about the matchup itself. Did you know much about Daquan, or I mean, what, what did you what did you know? Um, of course, be, before the contract, I didn't know much about him. But after that, we we looked up his fights at the UFC. He obviously had three fights, uh, three losses, but it, those were close calls. You know, he he stood there, stood there pretty good. You know, and I believe we. We studied in good. I believe we made a good, good plan. Nice, good game plan. And last thing for me, I mean, obviously this has been a long time coming, making this debut. So what's the goal here? I mean, is it just coming here and get a win and get that under your belt, or do you feel like you want to, you know, make an immediate splash, get people talking about you right away, thinking you know you're the, you're the next big thing? I believe I've proven with my previous victories and fights that I'm a good fighter and that people should talk about me because of that alone, you know. But I'm trying to keep my focus on this fight and, you know, as I said, it was a long year and I just want this to turn out perfectly, you know, for me and when when that when that is over, we will see what's next for me, you know. Is, is fighting someone like Daquan, who's on this losing streak, uh, more dangerous than fighting someone, say, on this long win streak because his back is to the wall and he has nothing to lose? Well, I'd, I'd say he has a lot to lose, you know, because victory over me would probably get him a new contract and if he loses then you know he he's out I guess but my previous opponent also was in a similar situation and he I don't know I would say he was a, a bit more dangerous but not as versatile as the Quan is you know but I, I'd say I, I don't want to you know think less of him or anything in terms of his game plan and Sports-wise, you know, I'm going 100% in that fight, no, no holding back.
one of your previous fights before the UFC when you defeated Michel Pereira, Michel Pereira has become very popular yeah. with the fans and in the UFC. Was it frustrating as all well to watch him get all of these fights while you're on this layoff and he's becoming so popular knowing that you had beat him already? To be honest, no, it's kind of interesting. I'm, um, I must say I be became something of a fan, you know. I'm glad that he he's doing well and, of course, I'm, I'm going to try to get there as soon as possible, but you know, I, I must say I'm. It's I feel you know good that he's doing so well. Uh, Serbia isn't really known for mixed martial arts. What are the biggest names over there? I know that some some of the Russian fighters were popular. Let's say Federer back in the days. Yeah. What's the situation like right now? Well, well, in terms of popular fighters there, as you said, Fedor and Mirko Krokop Filipovic, they are like the the biggest names there, everyone knows about them. But in this modern era of MMA, of course, uh, Aleksandar Rakic, who fights under Serbian flag, he has made, you know, a big success, you know, in his career and among, there are also a couple of new guys, Alex Akamur, who, who fights out of uh, uh, where is Ohio, I think. Now Dusan Medic, you know. There is Stefan Sekulic, who is also living close to me, I'm, and he is my training partner for this fight. You know, he's also a great fighter. Uh, I don't know if I missed anyone, but yeah, I think that's all. So MMA in Serbia is like everywhere, everywhere in the world. It's growing, but it it is. You know, it's going up. That's that's a good thing. People are becoming more aware of the sport, and I feel like this victory would like skyrocket that popularity in Serbia. So uh, football is definitely number one sports. In, <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, in, in Serbia. <laughs> even like watch a polo. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I don't know tennis. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, Djokovic, yeah. Djokovic, and uh, how, like, where, where would you? place MMA in the ratings like football is number one and MMA is like number five ten I, I don't know to be honest probably like five or six but I would like to be Novak Djokovic of MMA in Serbia yeah that would be nice so how long do you think it's going to take for MMA to become maybe not the number one sport but like somewhere in the top, yeah, top, top five top top three couple of years probably as I said, you know, we all know MMA is the fastest growing sports in the world, so the same case is in Serbia, but there are still some prejudice and, uh, you know, people don't actually realize what MMA is. They, st you know, there, there are a couple of, you know, uh, times where people ask you train UFC, you know? <laughs> so I'm like, no, man, <laughs> it's, it's a bit weird, but yeah, people are coming around and slowly it's uh, going up. The awareness of MMA and as a sport. Do people also associate MMA with like football hooligans because it's unfortunately, it's yeah, it's prejudices. You know, they tend to connect it to you know sorts of criminals and stuff, which is totally un unrelated and not true. But I I feel like it's journal journalists there that make all the wrong impressions of the sport. But do you think MMA is actually? like a room for those people, room for this aggression to actually channel it to the sports, take it away from the streets? From from my experience, I I don't have much energy after my, my workouts to do anything else, let alone be in some hooligan or criminal related activities. So I that's totally, totally wrong to think about that like that. So I feel like people need to need to change their minds about that. Hello. I hear you're currently working on uh, your graduation thesis at the moment. Yeah. I was just wondering how you manage time to do that as well as fighting for the UFC. <coughs> well, to be honest, it's a long time. <laughs> Finishing that, you know, I gave all my exams and then that final step to write that uh, thesis, you know, it's... I always postpone it because, you know, I'm a bit lazy, I'm focusing on, on this 100%, so... But after this fight, I'll try to find time to finish that and to <laughs> let that be water under the bridge, you know. <laughs> awesome. Thank you.
<laughs> what is the uh, thesis in? Uh, my my school is about um, IT, you know, and but man management part of IT, and I've managed to. It's going to be sound a little bit funny, but I've managed to get a thesis about. Uh, how to organize an MMA event and to describe it. So, my manager Bojan Mihailović is a organizer of the biggest promotion in probably in Europe, but in Serbia, 100% biggest promotion, Serbian Battle Championship, where I fought with Michel Pereira, mm -hmm. and you know I can have all the info <laughs> on one phone call, but as I said, I'm a bit lazy and sure. try to leave that for for later. That's it. That's it. Thank you. Thank you guys. See ya. Thank you very much.